No one word. We will uh, start with uh, J.D. Jackson and the first chapter that we will cover is electrostatics. <coughs> so starting from electrostatics and this we are starting from J.D. Jackson. You know, we have already covered these things in Griffiths, like the very first thing in electrostatics means the charge at rest. We have covered in electrostatic the very fundamental law, which is the Coulomb's law. The Coulomb's law is the same in Jackson as well, but representation are the different notations in Jackson's are different. So you will have to understand them you will have to understand the very basic difference between the Griffiths the way of, you can say, writing the things and the Jackson writing the things. So I will tell you now that what we did in uh, Griffiths that if you are having a positive charge, let's say Q1 and there is a charge Q2 and the distance between them is R then the force of interaction between them is K, Q1, Q2 and R vector by R3. This one I can write is K, Q1, Q2, R unit vector divided by R squared. R squared. So this will be the force of interaction, the mutual force of interaction between the two particles. Right? But the way the Jackson is doing this thing is different. Normally in Griffiths, we use sometimes this arm, tilted arm, which is in the last editions of Griffith. The, this tilted R is then from the reference point. But in Jackson, we will start everything from the reference point. So let's say we are having one charge, and this one charge is, uh, let me draw this here. Let's say this is charge which may be a positive or negative, but consider it a positive, and this is Q2. And another charge here, that is Q1. And these charges from a certain reference point, which I will call is O, this is our reference point O, and the distance between the charges is x. x is the distance between the charges and we have from this reference point which we call the origin. This distance is x2 and this distance is x1. This distance between the charges is x, this is x2, and this is x1. Now we will talk in terms of x1 and x2. You know that here the distance was r, here now the distance is x. So I can write the Coulomb's law that the force which is experienced by charge q1 in the field of charge Q2 are the force experienced by charge Q1 due to charge Q2 is equal to F1 force which is in this direction. This is F1 which is in the direction. F1 means the force on charge Q1. And similarly, in this direction we will have F2. F2 is the force which is experienced by charge Q2. Now I can write that F1 is equal 
to k q1 q2 and what about this x if this is the distance x here here so from the vector division i can write this thing from the reference point date this x while this x2 plus, plus x is equal to x1 because this plus this is equal to x1 from the vector addition you know head to tail rule yes, you are adding the vectors so from here x is equal to x1 minus x2 now what i will write here regarding to this this will be the x vector divided by the x cube of it so this is x vector divided by x cube so i can write that f1 is equal k q1 q2 and here this is x1 minus x2 divided by x1 minus x2 and this one is is q so i will write this thing in absolute so better we write it in absolute like this q clear in earlier versions like of griffiths as well we were considering the source point exactly on this charge so from one charge the distance from one charge to another charge but now we are taking it out so we didn't have to write it like this there is the way you k and k you know that this is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught this epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space and this is the free space so if other materials will come in permittivity of free space so if other materials will come in then this will be modified here epsilon naught will be multiplied with some relative permittivity this way k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught actually in our SI units system international units while this k is equal to 1 in our CGS units SI units are actually the MKS units and our CGS is the centimeter gram and second units so this k is equal to 1 in CGS but we will respect ourselves to the SI units because the Maxwell equations we have studied they are in uh, SI units we have studied okay now from here we will introduce means why this charge is experiencing a force because this charge is in the field of this charge so the field is produced by q2 and that field is causing force on q1 so i can write this thing that f1 f1 is equal to q1 which is the charge which is experiencing the force and the field is x1 okay the field is x1 why because from here you can see that x1 is equal to x2 plus x now when I will consider that the force is due to charge Q2 so the field, this field is produced at point X1 here so I have written EX1 and Q1 and this is F1 this is the field at point X1 this is the charge at point X1 and this is the force at point x1 so i can write that from this ex means the field at any point x 
the field at any point x means at any point this x I can write that this will be equal to k from this equation from this equation I can write that this is k q2 and now this is field at any x point so I can write this one is x minus x2 by x minus x2 for q. You got the point. Field at x1 is equal to ex1. If I write ex, it means it is the field at any point x. So from here, just get the value of x. The x value will be but because this is the field at x1, so it will be x2 point. This field is generated from x2 point. This charge is actually at x2. If I want to write what is the field at x1? If I want to write what is the field at x1? So what it will be? F1 by Q1. F1 by Q1. It will be F1 by Q1. That is fine. But at any point, if I want to write this in X1, what it will be? If I want to write this one in X1, then put over here. This one is X1. This X2 and this will be X1 minus X2. But now I want to find out the field at any distance x. So now look here. If I remove this one, if I remove this one, you can say that we replace x one by x. Yes. Next one by x. You just replace that one with this one. So this will be x minus x two because what you can write this one because. The field is there. If Q1 is there or not, the field is there. So we are not taking this x1 distance. But from the reference point, what is our distance and then what is x? So x minus x2 divided by x minus x2. Okay. So here, now this field, the field which is Ex1, the field which is Ex1, it does exist. It does exist. F, it does exist. If Q1 is there or not, the field will be there. This field is already there due to Q2. If we put Q1 there, then Q1 will experience some force. So the field is not due to Q1, the field is due to Q2. So from here, we conclude this thing and I can write the Ex for any generalized. Okay. Now, if we have This was one charge, which was Q2. If I have many charges, like there are QI charges, then they will definitely have their own fields. So the fields due to all of them will be equal to EX will be equal to E x and this will be k times summation on i i runs from 1 up to n and q i x minus x i divided by x minus x i q this was the field this field 
was the source because the source was generating the speed. It was the field at any point x, while the distance of the source from the reference was x2, right? Means from any observation point x, we will have to subtract the source distance from the reference point. So I can write x minus xi because it will be x1, x2, x3, different charges maybe like here, sorry here, like this one is x2, there is another charge which will be x3, there is another charge which will be x4 and so on. So the, if this i will be 1, then I will have q1, x minus x1, right? x minus x1 then x1 be the distance from the reference point to the source clear if it will be 2 then it will be our situation like this one q2 q2 is the charge so it will become q2 it will become x minus x2 it will be x minus x2 clear yes, when this will be the third charge so on. So for i number of charges or n number of charges, we are getting the electric field expression like this. Okay, but you know that if we have a volume charge distribution, like the charges that we have here are now like this. So it will be you can say it is very really easy to pick some charges of this one. But if they will be like this one, like volume charge distribution, volume charge distribution, which we call rho of x. Now, it is very really difficult to pick a single charge from this one, a point charge from this one. It is very really difficult. So what we will do, we need a mathematical tool which can take a point charge out of it and that is the Dirac delta function, right? The Dirac delta function, if we will apply on a charge distribution, then it will take one point charge out of it because Dirac delta function is a single point function. Clear? So I can say that the volume charge density, let's say the volume charge density we are having at x prime point, then I can write that summation on ions from 1 to m means after a little bit more you can say time we will write this just summation on m. And Qi, then this will go to this will go to summation on I and Qi by if I write it Qi delta V and then this is delta V. I hope you have no objection because mathematically this is fine. And this one I can then write that this is actually the volume charge, charge per unit volume, and it is rho. And if I say that the charges are point charges, they are clustered together, then this one will go to rho x prime and d cube x prime. Right? When the charges are like this, then you call them discrete charges. Because they can be summed as 1, 2, 3. But when they go from the discrete to point charges, and they are, you can say, a continuous distribution of charges, then this charge per unit volume I write rho, which is the volume charge distribution, and then dq x prime 
So I can see this 